thank you very much. This is a, a pleasure for me. And, and as our previous speaker on film said, um, we don't know what that future will be. But I have children, and I care about that future, which is why I'm happy to come to an event like this. I get to come to you from California, and I can tell you that I'm a very lucky man. Okay? I get to dabble in something called vertebrate paleontology, which is arguably one of the most popular scientific endeavors uh, in the world. At least if you go by the Discover Channel, we're the only guys who get our own week, right? <laughs> Other than shark guys, the shark guys get their own week, right? Shark attack week, but there's no paleontology attack week. No, we actually go out and find the bones, okay? Uh, and it's a lot of fun, I can tell you this, but... I do more than just that, and, um, and one of the great things about what we're doing here is we're talking about intersections. Franz uh, told you this morning in our very first talk, which is inspiring to everybody, about intersections, finding connections in places where you don't usually. Well, one of the great things about, about the life sciences and the physical sciences is that earth science is part of both, and that vertebrate paleontology, finding the rocks and the bones together, is an intersection, a classic intersection uh, of science, in fact. Okay? Um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to do this. Uh, my timer seems to be stuck on 15 minutes, as much as I'd like to have the entire... Thank you very much, because I want to keep my timing proper. I'd, I'd like to take your entire afternoon, because I'm an academic. We blah, 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 right? So, <laughs> but it's only fair to the speakers who follow me. Okay? So, so this is a Venn diagram, and Do Dr. Van Duren, who came before me, would probably find this level of mathematics in intensely primitive, but this is the best I can offer to you as a paleontologist right now. And what I'd like to talk to you about is an unusual set of intersections that not only uh, has been something that's taken place in my career, but I think is actually uh, fortuitously going to happen for the children of Pittsburgh. Okay? So I'd like to talk about that a little bit today. Okay? Uh, and if I can, there we go. And that is the worlds in which I get to play. I'm a paleontologist. I'm one of those fellows who helps to dig up the bones that you find in the museums and that you hear about in the Discover Channel. It is quite fun. But I am an educator first and foremost. I teach anatomy uh, at, at uh, California State University System in California. But the interesting connection for me in Pittsburgh is that, in fact, I'm a research associate at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. My longtime field partner is Dr. David Berman. And you might not know him by name, but Dave is a guy who switched the heads on a patasaurus, remember? <laughs> he was a guy who found out that brontosaurus didn't exist. He's the only paleontologist in the world who gets hate mail from kids. <laughs> okay. Poor Dave. I love Dave, and I wish he were here, but he's probably out shooting a deer right now, okay? Uh, it's Pennsylvania, come on. Uh, uh, and I also, interestingly enough, get to work with animators. I get to work with animators because paleontologists love anatomy, and animation and movement are anatomically based, okay? So these are these weird worlds in which my life collides. And collisions and intersections are one of the things that we're doing here today. Okay? Uh, so let me tell you briefly about paleontology. Paleontology is fun. This is my field partner, Dave, from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History right here in the city of Pittsburgh. This is Dave in uh, uh, northern New Mexico working with me. Most of my pictures of Dave and Dave's butt because I'm the one behind the camera and he's the one uh, in front of the camera. Okay? This is in a, a place called um, uh, uh, Valley of the Gods in, in uh, uh, southeastern Utah. Okay? That's my son in northern New Mexico. This is all about children after all. Paleontology is not as, as, as sexy as people make it out on TV. <laughs> okay? This is central Germany this last summer. Average temperature in the mountains where we're digging up the bones, 42 degrees at noon every day. Okay? So it's not always like Jurassic Park. Trust me. But it's beautiful country. It's beautiful country. This is my favorite bit of southeastern Utah. Uh, we call this Grandma Watching TV Butte. <laughs> ah. I, I, this is before the age of flat screens, okay? And I, I got to tell you, I think, I think uh, this is my own personal interpretation, I think there's a cat sleeping on top of the warm television set. So this is where I work in the summertime. This is my summer office. The accommodations are excellent, okay? Can't show you that one for very long. And you know what? A lot of this happens right here in Pittsburgh. This is an animal that we found in Germany with German and Pittsburgh colleagues. Uh, and this is Dave and Amy Henrici. They're right here at the Carnegie, right here in Pennsylvania right here in Pennsylvania. They're my close colleagues. They have been for over 20 years, okay? And we find some fabulous fossils. They're not dinosaurs, but they're pretty great fossils, let me tell you, okay? And, and you can go right down, right, right down to the, uh, uh, to the uh, museum and see these things, okay? The earliest bipedal animal ever? Oh, yeah, we were, we were supported by National Geographic Society to do it, and National Geographic always said, we're going to put it in the, in the, in the magazine. Great, okay? Great. It's the first bipedal animal ever. It's got legs twice as long as its arms. They go, no, no numbers, no numbers. Our, our, our readers don't like numbers. They said, well, it could scratch its, its uh, nose with its toes, but it couldn't scratch its ass with its fingers. <laughs> they quoted me. 
<laughs> Except they changed the word ass to butt, okay? Now, I'm probably not going to be on the TED website for saying ass, right? I don't know, so, okay? And we've done some fun things. We figured out that that animal, that iconic animal, which is in all the plastic dinosaur toy kits, not a dinosaur, okay? Actually had very bendy spines, very funky stuff, okay? But in addition to paleontology, I get to teach anatomy to animators. How fun is that? Paleontology and animation. I've got like two of the five uh, fantasy jobs covered. I'll have to do become a fireman and a ballerina, a football player, and like I'm done, okay? <laughs> And I've gotten to work on tons of films. The first one I got to work on was Beauty and the Beast, uh, the most recent one, uh, which we're still in progress right now. We're working with Ang Lee on The Life of Pi, which I'm sure will please a lot of you or terrify some of you because it is an iconic book, I understand. And I've gotten to work on a lot of things in between because good animation, good animation is anatomically based. Animation is about shape and movement, and good movement comes from joints, and, and that's one of my connections here in Pittsburgh, is because of this film and art connection, I get to work with the people at places like Carnegie Mellon University's Entertainment Technology Center. I get to come and visit them. I get to visit with the folks at, at the Pittsburgh Art Institute. And, and all of these things, for me personally, have become some very interesting connections. Okay? This is a cartoon. And we spent days and days and days doing the mathematical, the mathematical components of how a rat runs to get it right for Ratatouille. All right. Of course, Pixar is an iconic group. Now, I am a paleontologist and a scientist, and I work with a group called the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, and I'm pleased to tell you that we have a huge education and outreach uh, program. Okay, I'm chair of the Education and Outreach um, uh, Division for our society. And the good news is this. In October of 2010, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, the largest professional organization of paleontologists, the guys who do the dinosaurs, the women who do the dinosaurs, is coming to Pittsburgh. All right. The 70th anniversary of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Market calendars October 13th to 16th. Okay? We'll be doing education. We'll be doing outreach. We'll be talking about climate change. That is the future of our children. The education we're talking about, the future of our children. And we are going to be doing workshops. We're going to be doing workshops for kids. And I've got to tell you, one of my close colleagues is in England. He's a gentleman named Chris Williams. And I worked with him at a... Uh, we can start the next clip, please. Okay. Uh, we worked on a... He asked me... I came to a film Have festival. Have you seen those fossils? That and, and, and we worked with these kids. We worked with these kids. These are all kids from, from uh, economically depressed uh, middle schools in England. All right? And he said, will you help me with an animation workshop? I said, mm, I'm not an animator. I'm a paleontologist. He said, but you work with animators. I said, I'll tell you what. If you do dinosaurs in animation, I'll do it with you. Raging success. We had 200 slots. A thousand children wanted to show up. A thousand kids. Now, I'm a paleontologist working with animators. These kids showed up with their teachers. Can we forward it to uh, the fourth minute now, please? Thank you. I, I love AV people. Are you kidding? They save our lives, don't they? Okay. This video that you're about to watch right now are kids making dinosaurs, making animated films. These kids made an entire animated film with a paleontologist talking about science education, with an animator, the same kind of people you have at CMU ETC, the same kind of people you have at Pittsburgh Art, and the same kind of people you have around the city. This kid was great. We had artists from Pixar. We had artists from Blue Sky, the people who do Ice Age. We had artists from Disney, all helping kids make dinosaurs. And I was talking about science education, evolution, the scientific method, and what are you going to be when you grow up? Well, I'm not going to grow up. But what are you going to do when you become an adult? These kids made their own films. These kids learned about science, and their teachers followed. You know, I'm a paleontologist. I'm an evolutionary biologist. I'm the only kind of scientist out there where people in the public say, you know what, uh, I don't believe you. Think about that. A lot of people don't believe in evolution. It's not a matter of belief. It's scientific data. The data are there. You wouldn't go to your doctor and say, uh, you know what, I've never gone to medical school, but uh, let me tell you how to cut. Or you'd never go to your dentist and say, you know, I've never studied teeth, but let me tell you how to extract it. And I teach anatomy to these people. Yet, 
I, I can't convince them that the data exists. But you know what? The kids, they love it. The kids listen. The kids listen about science. It's not just about evolution. It's about climate change. It's about ecology. It's about microbiology. It's about math. The computers here have a basis in math that you heard about from Dr. Van Doren. How can we do this? How can we tap it? We tap it through our children. I can beat my head against the wall with most adults, except for the kind of adults are in the, that are in the room today. But you know what? I'm preaching to the converted. I love Ted. I've been invited to Ted once before I couldn't go, and I'm thrilled that I got to this one. But you are the converted. You are the choir to whom I preach. The choir that I want to preach to, with your help, are the children of Pittsburgh. Okay? Now, the model we started, we started the model with kids like this. Now, they look like posh kids from private schools or not. This is the way the, the, the school system works in England, all right? These kids are all from depressed middle schools, and, and none of these kids uh, would ever be able to afford a private education. Absolutely not. And, and can, we, can we let that keep going, actually? Do you mind? I'd like you to listen to this little bit right here. Society of virtual paleontology, which one day I'd hope to... Okay? That's what I dream of. I dream of kids who want to study. And let it go all the way to the end. Trust me, it'll be worth it here for us today. Okay? I went to a film festival in England, and I promised I would help them teach animation with science. The scientists are coming to Pittsburgh in 2010. Pixar, Disney, Blue Sky, they've all been to the animation and film works. The scientists are coming here. I want them all to come here. Pixar comes to Pittsburgh is what I dream of, right? We're going to do those same work spots in Pittsburgh. We want hundreds of kids involved. We're going to bring Chris over from England if we can pull it off. We'll see you in Pittsburgh next year. That's what I want. Okay. We heard from our last speaker that science and math are here and that the arts are left here. They should be here. One is the other. They don't complement the other. They are each other. They can be each other. We can do it in Pittsburgh. We hope to do it. And I hope that Ted gives me the opportunity to meet some of the people that will help myself, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, ETC, Pittsburgh Art, and the children of Pittsburgh pull it off, and then we will become the model for the rest of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you.